Hey all viewers and viewers, is, uh, my name is John Rudd Stratus, and welcome back to Canarium. This is episode 8. So, remember in the last episode, things got very interesting. After a little bit of tiny bit of frustration with that uh, blood drawing puzzle, we got deeper and deeper here into this ancient uh, set of ruins. We got chased by bad guys. First proper chase of, you know, the game. And then we left off here, in this big sort of altar room, with this big statue of an elder thing. So, lovely. I wonder what else we're going to end up encountering down here. I don't actually know how long this game is, but I feel like it can't be that much longer. I mean, I don't know. Oh, we got another message. Come on. I don't know if anybody reads this, or if there is anyone still alive out there. I, I've lost everybody who was on my search party. I am alone and afraid. Even from the outer plate echoes of my own footsteps that are reverberating along these halls of ages long silence. It is hard to tell if I am alive anymore. Those visions, sounds, the, the devilish scenes described in the reliefs I come across every uh, now and then. We were not meant to be here. No shit, Sherlock. Dr. Faust! Dr. Faust, are you there? Answer me, please! Nope. He's not answering. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock, that you weren't supposed to be down here. I mean, with a name like Faust, you know. Do you not even get the literary reference in your own name, my friend? Ooh. Hello. Oh, it's just a weird little hollow that I can't get into. wondering what that was. Gosh. Like I say, I don't know how long this game is, or how much more there is, but it's been very enjoyable. I like it. Gosh. Well, more potential pass- oh no, maybe not in that direction. Um, these like urns? Little pots or something? I don't know. Or bells, kind of. Oh yeah, look at them. <laughs> Weird. Okay. We could go up there, we could go over there. What's up here? I'm kind of curious to this big shape. Oh, vision time! Ah, bells, hello. Show me the bells, bitches. Oh god. You're not looking good. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's not a nice sound, is it? How lovely! What are they doing? Ritual sacrifices or something? Jesus. All these, like, freaking reptile men who've been fucking head crabbed. Obviously, not head crabs. Maybe Cthulhu crabs. <laughs> Cthulhu's crabs, everybody. I don't know. Ugh, sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Alright, well, that was absolutely fantastic. Jesus. Well, they've got trees and stuff growing down here. Ugh. Faust, wherever you are, I think you're fucked. Let's be honest. This place is going to drive you fucking insane, boy. As it kind of is with Frank over here. Old Frank, even if... And again, we don't even know if it is Frank. Still that thing about, you know, mental projection and all that. Maybe we're secretly the monster. Who knows? Are we going staticky again? We are. Who's around here? I don't like these fucking statues along. I feel like they're going to come to life. It's going to be bad. Bad for business and all that. What? Uh, what? What's going on? I don't feel right. I don't feel right at all. We're going all layers of fear again, it seems. Well, sure. I'll go back into this house of nothingness. I believe no more can we harbour ourselves to the safest shores for... There are things that cannot be undone. Oh, 
wait a minute. Did we just come full circle? At the start of the game again? Hello? Faust? Uh, don't. <laughs> thought you were going to push him for a second then. What? Oh, what was that? Just flick it up from the right then. What the... What the? Okay, we're going to another area. Again, I, I don't know how long this game is. Do you reckon we'll break double digits in terms of episode number? What? Faust, are you aware of the thing behind you? What is even real anymore? Was, was that a sheer delusion? I feel like maybe not, my friend. Achievement unlocked demons of the past. Dr. Faust Journal Entry 1. Entry 1, 14th and 9th, 1944. Having heightened my knowledge of the arcane arts, I find myself contemplating the subject of universals. Whether definitions exist in the nature of things or in mere conceptions, illusory, or perhaps a sheer product of human language. Our means of receiving impressions are absurdly few, and our notions of surrounding objects infinitely narrow. We see things only as we are constructed to see them, and can gain no idea of their absolute nature. So what lies beyond the woven limits of the flesh we've been trapped in, and is it really possible to pass beyond it at least once? What do we know of the world and the universe around us? For the last ten years of my rough life, I've lived with the undulating echoes of those scorching questions that have rendered me a ghost amongst the flocks. But yesternight, I finally got some answers. During the last session, Frank and I managed to get the printer to work, and even though the results are blurry, we have the first empirical proof of what we saw out there. What? What? I don't even know anymore. Am I picking up my torch again? What? What? Nice painting, Jesus. What is going on? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, man. I can't rave enough about this. Oh, what? Oh, we hello. Need to be cautious not to let anyone else see this grand collection. It could be extremely dangerous for both of us. Right. Okay. Get these candles. Torch the entire house. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's got... Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Deliberately preserved heads from Mesopotamian marshlands. Such cultivated minds kept in permanence by getting dried under the scorching sun with methods now lost to us. As well as the sun, they were believed to be symbols of knowledge. Jesus. How about this one? Oh God. Christ. I mean... You got an interesting taste in ornaments, I'll give you that. Just horrible looking heads. Kept in your display cabinet. Okay, well the less said about those the better. Oh nice, you got a crocodile? A stuffed sub-adult Nile crocodile. One of the oldest creatures still living on the face of the earth. Okay. He's updating my journal with all of these. Fast remarks. Another fast warning about a secret collection. It's like adding things in, which is very interesting. Hold on, let me just go back to that again. Oh, there's no no further pages. Uh, there's nothing actually in that one. Uh, what about this one? Oh, God. <laughs> Check these things. Hello! A medicine man mask from Northwest Africa. All right, okay. And this one? A sacrifice ritual mask from Middle Africa. Okay. I mean, you've got a nice collection, I'll give you that, even if it is a bit freaky. A globe, 
purchased at an antique store in London. <laughs> God. What is happening? I don't know. What's with all the candles? Why is this place in a massive state of disrepair? What's the deal, Faust? What's going on with your house? House, house Faust? Oh, hello. Uh, Valise. Hmm. Looks like a preparation for a long trip. Yeah, no shit. Hmm. <laughs> Looks like a preparation for a long trip. You got your binoculars in there, your little compass, your map, your camera. That's probably uh, the way onward. We're not going to go out there yet. Oh gosh, let's go down to the basement. Why not? I'm sure there's not going to be horrible stuff down here. Oh god. <laughs> Oh, imagine being a child living in this house. With all of this horrible stuff. Good lord. Locked. Locked. Okay, sure. Well, are we... Uh, sure we're going to find a key for that. Who knows. Uh, is this room? Hello. Oh, God, there's more rooms through there. Ah. Ugh. This relic is from Madagascar. I have two versions, but... This one is extremely rare. It is called Ur Hanaldi. Nobody knows exactly what it means. But from its symbolic depiction of a dark sphere inside a light one, it is thought that it could mean the underworld. Dark sphere inside a light one? I had one. it brought by an old captain friend who often visits that island for trading purposes. Oh yes. Exactly, dear boy. What about this one? You gonna say anything about this, mate? Hmm? No? Okay, sure, sure. Ooh, hello. This is exactly the same room I've been in, in one of my visions. Oh, God. Okay, I feel like I've seen that painting somewhere before. I'm sure there's a... Yeah, a, a painter... Who was it? Who painted a picture of, like, a giant eating somebody. What's this thing? Ooh, it's got like faces on it. Weird. Okay. How strange. Oh, nothing in the drawer, maybe, or... Aha! Here we are. Letter addressed to Dr. Faust. Old friend. What you've told me about the shared nature of the experience the Canarium provides made me think about necromantic means of data inquiry. I'm sure you'll remember what I told you about why certain corpses never decay, but rest firm and fatten their tombs for a thousand years. I believe, with some help from a certain acquaintance, I can provide you with such specimens. This would be beneficial for both of us, I believe. Eagerly awaiting your answer, H. Warren. Hmm. Okay. Anything else in here I can look at? Oh. Anything in the book cabinet? No. This one? Drawers? Anything in here? What's that? Oh, it's a penguin. Hello, penguin. <laughs> Read description. Figurine of an emperor penguin, a creature native to Antarctica. Oh, is it a trophy item? Can I take it? Yes, there we are. Pengi, you're the most normal thing we've encountered in this game. <laughs> According to legend, this very djembe belonged to a learned drummer from Senegal who can speak with the dead by rhythmically beating it. Okay. And this thing? A native drum from the Asmat people of New Guinea. Their creation myth says Fumeripits made the first carvings of men and women. By beating on this drum, Fumeripits caused the figures to dance, bringing them to life. Interesting. So these actual mythologies and ideas taken from uh, past civilizations. Oh yeah, I think it's these pictures again that we saw earlier in the game when we were last here. Interesting. Right. Stuff on here maybe we can look at? Or what's this? Oh. 49. Circled certain dates. First, the 6th and the 13th. Calendar. Okay. Interesting. So there's nothing else in here by the looks of it? Okay. So what's through this way. More stuff potentially that we can look at. Anything in the drawers? Nothing on the shelves. Um, oh, hello. It's an oriental mask. Mask 
of an all-powerful moon goddess esteemed by an eastern island tribe, now lost in time. It is from the private collection of the late, famous hermit, Klaus von Herdeth. Don't ask me how I get it. I have my ways. You murdered him! <laughs> I don't know. Good god, look at these ones. 004? Elusive mask from the submerged parts of Kugulin Islands. Right. Just a short one, that. Is this the same? A cryptic mask with an untraced origin. Okay. You haven't got much to say about some of them, but... Okay, sure. God, there's even more doors around here. What's this room? Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I think I've seen that painting before. Yeah, I feel like I have. That looks familiar. Yes. Okay, can we get to the drawers, please? No, apparently not. Is there anything on this table? Ah. Ah, it's the Canarium. Okay. Secondary component, primary component, interior mounted on a glove. Alright. And this one? Electrical discharge heads, electric sound transmitters. Hmm. Jim unlocked Grand Inquisitor. Nice. Bit by bit, I am slowly getting the achievements. Aha! Oh! What just happened? Hmm. It sounded like the floor is hollow back there. Oh yes, that totally couldn't be a trapdoor, could it? <laughs> it's stuck. Hmm, I have to find some way of levering it up, I think. Okay. Woodland Lizard Spirit Mask. Okay. That's all you're going to say about it? A serpentine ritual mask from India, which is said to have hypnotic effects on the one who deeply gazes into its eyes. Okay. Challenge accepted, bud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, pause the video now and see how long you can stare into those eyes. Right, okay. So we know that there's um, something down here that we can uh, find. We just need to find out, of course, uh, how to lever that trapdoor up. Dear E.W. Ross, how can we comprehend exactly how much time has passed since the erection of the earlier ziggurats of Sumeria? What can we know about the time-worn Sphinx still standing on the Giza Plateau? They only justify the sheer ignorance of mankind by forcefully making us admit our instantaneous vibrations in the vast cosmos are but an illusion. Today I want to inform you about something that is equally as interesting as such edifices. It's something I presume you will have, ha uh, you will have a hard time believing. I finally acquired some information regarding the fabled cities of Urub al Kali, which is said to have been built in an un undreamt age of certain wonders, and rumoured to have been intentionally submerged beneath the eternally shifting sands thousands of years ago. There is even more to the story. According to a reliable source, there should be depictions or information about the locations of ancient canariums buried within those walls. Within a few weeks, you will receive a book containing the locations of those cities, and a map predating all maps known today, directly copied from the antediluvian originals. I am sure you are excited beyond imagination, and eager to discuss these findings in detail, but that will have to wait a while while... Uh, since I'll be away for some time, visiting the oriental ones of the old world. I'm sure you know what I mean. Hope to see you soon. Harley Warren. Hmm. Was Harley Warren... The name's familiar. I'm pretty sure Harley Warren was from a Lovecraft story, wasn't he? I can't remember the name of it. Was Harley Warren the character who went down into, like, a tomb somewhere? He had a friend with him. There was, like, a graveyard... And the story was that whilst his friend would wait on the surface, he would descend into the tomb. But then, as he goes down there, it's like he has a means of communicating with his friend back on the surface. And then he like starts something. He encounters something you don't actually see because it's all from the point of view of his friend waiting on the surface. But then it's like something happens, and he hears Harley Warren's voice speaking to him in the tomb, warning him not to go down there. And he thinks that's not Harley Warren speaking. That's something speaking in his voice. That's the story, or something like that. I think it is. It just sounds familiar, that's all. Anything in this drawer? No. Ah, phonograph. I don't have one, do I? No. Okay, we need to find a phonograph cylinder. Is this in the centre? Uh, can't do anything with it. Okay. Well, there's another door, so there's probably more stuff to find. Do I see this? This is called the Mask of the Beholder. Chimney Lock Masquerade. 
alright. <laughs> You're not going to say where it's from. Skulls? Oh god. That's bright. Okay. Hmm. Not going to say anything? Skulls from New Guinea that are believed to be housing protective spirits. Alright. Okay. Anything in these drawers? Ah, okay. Right, there's going to be a key or something around, isn't there? It just shuts that. Okay. Was there anywhere else I could have gone? Um, nothing else in here, was there? So I don't know. I don't see anything. So we've got to find a way to lever up that trap door. Hold on, can we go out this way? Locked. Locked. Basement? No, wait. Hold on. This was locked down here, though, wasn't it? Hold on, hold on. Hold your horses. Yeah, that's locked. Oh, hold on a minute. Something down here that I didn't find. Dr. Faust, Journal Entry 3. Uh, 22nd of the 9th, 1944. Lying outside the known space-time continuum. This is a dimension to which the gate is, o uh, gate is knowledge and the key is the canarium. As we start to shed our fleshly bindings, we start to perceive more and more. If we inquire by merely knowing and thinking on any subject matter, Windows to related time and space open up before our non-material selves, our minds. And what's better, we've grasped that the experiences in the sessions are shared and even improved by all of the attendees' personal knowledge. Even thinking about the possibilities that may bestow upon us in our quest for transcending the limits of our mortal bodies is about to make me crazy. But sometimes I wonder what has been keeping our sanity intact inside of this forbidden place. Beyond the thick walls of pitch darkness surrounding us, there is something looming, whispering in my ears in a language familiar, yet I cannot discern its content. Right. Oh boy. Faust, old boy, you have been up to some real crazy stuff, haven't you? Well, there's got to be keys around somewhere that I'm supposed to find to unlock some of these doors. Or get that trap door up at the very least. Um, hmm. No, that's just the like valise. For a long trip. Okay, hold on. It's got to be like a... Ah! Crowbar! Hello! Didn't see that before. Found it this time, right? Does this lever up the trapdoor by any chance? Was it... It wasn't in there, was it? Is it back in here? Ah! There we are! Okay, right, what do we got? Phonograph cylinder. I'll take that. Good. And this thing, what's that? Oh god, turn that friggin' torch off. Huh. What is that? Some sort of medallion or something? Ornamental metallic object. What is that? Object with eight pointy shapes on it. Okay. Hmm. Right, where's the phonograph? It's over here. When using Cornarium, we are able to be seen as well as to see. For some time, I was detecting a conscious something previously unseen by my rudimentary vestiges. Only lately it becomes clear to me. Now it comes into every session. It seems to materialize more and more each time. I won't, I won't attempt describing it, but only would say that it's not benevolent. From what I can get from its glowing semblance, which I believe is used as a way of communication, it can sense you. Only if you spend a considerable time within the sessions. I've read about it in the cursed Necronomicon and some elusive records compiled from deep-rooted Bedouin oral literature. Thus learned that it tries reaching the corporeal vessel to dominate and execute the wanderers of the beyond, such as ourselves. But again, against all warnings, I was a fool to believe that I can stop it with just simple signs and incantations. As a resort, we ended up lighting up the place with myriads of candles as well as electrical lamps, but still shiver with fear with every noise our rundown enclave is causing, isolated from ancient darkness of the night. Hmm. Oh boy, so you realised the futility of your situation, basically. Of what you were doing. You can't control these nightmarish things. Of course you can't. Right, um, so... I've got the old cylinder phonograph, but... 
somewhere now. That's the question. Still locked. Uh, there's got to be a key somewhere. Something that enables us to uh, get through that door. How? Where do we find it? Oh. I'm sorry. I just knock into something? Huh. Okay. Anything back in here or... I think no keys or anything like that. Nothing hidden that I'm supposed to be able to find. No, nothing on there. Cabinet. Drawer that can't open. Fireplace. It's just the doors, but... Can't get to those cupboards down there. That's just another... Thing. This is the office. You sure there's nothing here? I'm supposed to be able to take... Is there a reason why... Um, well, those days are circled. 1, 6 and 13. Is it like a code? 1613? Who knows? Can I shut that door, please? I definitely can't go over there. Okay. That's not happening. Just keep that in mind, everybody. 1613. Um, it's locked. Definitely doesn't... No. Was there anything back upstairs? Come to think of it, that I may, maybe I missed. Other than, of course, these freaking horrible shrunken heads. Oh, what the... No, there's nothing in there. Okay. Genuinely nothing at all, or...? Hmm. No keys. Nothing that I'm supposed to utilise to open a door somewhere, or...? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, it's just like... Feather... things. Hmm. Now, there has to be something. Lamps. Grandfather clock. Nothing? Huh. Hmm. I wonder. Who would it be? It's clearly... Hmm, I've got to open a door somewhere, but... Where? Which door do I open? I don't have my... Oh, hang on, I've got this thing. Maybe this goes somewhere. Hold on. Maybe there's like a special lock. Perhaps on a basement door, maybe? What do you reckon? I don't know if this will work. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses. We got it. Yeah. Stick that on there. <laughs> Oh. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, no. What am I supposed to do here? Select space to interact, or... I did something there. I'm not sure what. Wait. I'm using sort of... Ooh, what? Okay, I'm like pressing... Oh, is it 1613? Wait, 1613, so... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. Fuck. This is a bit awkward, isn't it? Right. So... One... Six... I can't use that one again. Three? Hmm. I don't know. Ugh. Okay, maybe there's a... Hmm. So I was just thinking about those things on the calendar upstairs that are... well, not upstairs. Yeah, upstairs. That are all circled. Right. Okay, we'll tell you what. I think we're recording for about half an hour-ish there. Maybe just under or just over. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave it here for this episode. We'll come back to this and we'll solve it in the next ep uh, in the next episode. So I hope you'll join me for that. Facebook and Twitter links down below as usual, along with the Propagandist channel link. And, um, you know, if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, perhaps share my videos with your friends on social media. But... In the meantime, I'm going to sign off now. So, goodbye, everybody. Okay, so I'm, I'm wondering where the uh, Hitler aspect of this comes in. <laughs> is that an extra life? Okay, that is not an extra life. That was a fucking troll. <laughs> what the hell was... Okay. Let's just go into the magic portal, then. Oh my god, what is this? Um, I see there's a dev head over there, hanging from a chain above a pool of lava. Sparks going down around it. And um, Hitler will kill you. And there's a big German. What the fuck was that? What just fell down? 
I freaking saw that. Okay, well, this is a unique level already. Um. What? I. What? I'm confused, everybody.